Hi everyone and welcome to my TBR shelf. So you may have seen this bookcase in my most recent bookcase tour which was actually a full tour of my mum's house here in Edinburgh including all the bookcases in it. Mine, my mum's, my dad's, all of our books collected together which numbered between like three and four thousand. It was quite a large book haul and we obviously didn't go through every single book individually because of that. I mentioned in that tour however that I might do a full tour of my TBR shelf which is the bookcase in my bedroom and quite a few of you seemed super interested in that and I thought it would be fun to film so here we are. This is the only full sized bookcase in my bedroom. I have some little books dotted around elsewhere but this is my bookcase and it's right next to my bed which is on the other side here. I'm also sort of using it as a bedside table with my lamp and um, coaster etc. But what I've done is put on this bookcase all the books that I own that are unread that I would like to read next. Now there are a lot of books on here, there's probably around 50 or so, so they're not obviously the books I plan on reading in one month but it's nice to sort of have them here next to me to know that all these books are unread, that I really want to read all of these books and that when I finish a book, especially if I finish a book in the evening, I can just like turn to my side, have a little look through what I have next to me and pick something else to read. So that's kind of how I've organised my books now. I will admit there are a few other books in this house that I haven't read and they haven't made it to this bookcase. I've also not put non-fiction on here because if I'm in a non-fiction mood it's a very specific mood so I can go to the non-fiction bookcase. But these are in effect the most prominent books on my TBR. I'm going to go through every single one and show it to you. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about each one otherwise this video will be a hundred years long which is pretty typical of my videos lately. I've been filming a lot of long videos but I think it'll just be easier if I go through things quite briefly and if you've read that book or are interested in that book you can let me know if I should pick it up ASAP and help me prioritise what is on here. I'd love to hear from you if you're interested or have read any of these books. So without further ado let's get started. These are in no particular order. So um, the first two books, I'll just take two at a time, are one that I know I'll be getting to soon because it's the current book club read for my Patreon book club which is The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor which is a sci-fi novel about um, a woman who has been experimented on and is now a sort of like accelerated woman she's described as who escapes her prison where she's been kept and experimented on. We then have The Deep by River Solomon which is about um, mermaid folklore but these mer people are descendants of um, slaves who drowned during um, the slave trade when they were crossing the seas. We then have two books by the same author because I'm so excited about both of these. I recently read The Long Way to Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers which is the first in her Wayfarer series I think it's called but this is book two regardless this is the um, sequel which is A Closed in Common Orbit by Becky Chambers and it's the next book in the series although it follows different characters and they're all set in um, a, a space setting in, in, in the far flung future so I'm excited about that and then we have her novella To Be Taught If Fortunate which is also set in the future and is also science fiction but I believe it's not part of the same sort of world slash series. Um, it's sort of its own thing and I'm just super keen to read more of her sci-fi. We then have a sequel in a duology that I've been meaning to read for the longest time and I'm hoping that this TBR shelf is also going to help me to push to pick up things that I need to get to and that is The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adé. This is the sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn which is a retelling of 1001 Arabian Nights or Arabian Tales, the fairy tale folklore and I loved book one in this series. And I think because I love book one so much, I've been a little bit apprehensive to read book two. But it's on my TBR. We then actually have a book that I pinched off my dad's bookcase, which is A History Maker by Alistair Gray. I've only ever read one Alistair Gray book, but I very, very much enjoyed it. And my dad had a few on his bookcases, so I thought I would read another one. And this was the one that I was drawn to. To be perfectly honest, can't really remember what it's about. But... Like I said, just kind of interested in our Alistair Grey book. We then have The Bear and the Nightingale, which is the first in a series, I can't remember the name of the series, but it's a fantasy trilogy and I hear amazing things. We also have What Happened That Night by Deanna Cameron. I didn't realise when I picked this up that it was originally a Wattpad novel, which I think is super cool. So this was originally published independently on Wattpad, the writing platform, and then got picked up by a publisher, Penguin specifically, and it's a sort of YA mystery thriller which 
you know I love, one of my favourite subgenres. We then have another one I picked off my dad's bookcase and I sort of picked this out when I was reorganising them a little bit and thought it sounded interesting. It's um, a piece of classic Chinese literature, a classic Chinese legend called Monkey by Wu Cheng En. I don't know terribly much about it but I've not read a lot of Chinese myths and legends so I thought this one could be interesting. We also have two more sort of um, penguin classics from different cultures. We've got some Japanese ghost stories by Lafcadio Hearn and we have the Ramayana um, translated by R.K. Narayan which is a piece of Hindu literature. We then have a book that I may actually have to take off my TBR shelf since I hauled it because I've been informed this is the 11th book in a series. I bought it recently, had no idea it's the 11th book in a series. That is not clear at all from the paperback and I hate that. But I had really mixed responses from commenters saying that you can read this first, jump in wherever you want in the series or you have to read from the beginning. To be perfectly honest, I'm probably not going to buy 10 more books in a series before getting to this so I would rather just read it if you can without having read the other 10. So let me know if that is possible, if it's not then I may have to rethink my plans but if it's possible that's what I want to do because um, that's the kind of reader I am. We then have another book I recently hauled which is The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin which is a fancy novel that also incorporates gods who live alongside mortals and I love that kind of fantasy. We have Skeen Island by Elia Whiteley, which is a sort of surrealist, creepy novel. I don't know exactly what to expect from this, except that Elia Whiteley is a gorgeous writer and writes some really, really creepy books. <laughs> um, however, not everything she writes is terrifying, but on the front it does say elegantly chilling, so I think this might fall into the horror category. We also have, because I'm in a creepy mood, uh, an English ghost story by Kim Newman, which is about a family that moved to a mysterious new house, the way many creepy stories begin. I picked this up in a charity shop. And Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. This is another one that I think is a little bit creepy about um, a strange brother and sister who go missing and the neighbours that decide to seek them out. Look at me emptying off this bookcase. <laughs> we have um, XX by Angela Chadwick, which is about um, a couple, two women who decide to have a baby by a new procedure which allows them to uh, use both of their own DNA to um, have the child without having to have any uh, male DNA donated and this causes outcry from certain groups. We then have Permission by Saskia Vogel which is a book about a woman who develops a relationship with a dominatrix. We then have some middle grade. We have High Rise Mystery by Sharna Jackson, which I feel like is very clear from the title. It's a uh, middle grade mystery and I really like the sound of that. And A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol, which is about a young autistic girl who is um, doing a school research project in to the witch trials in her area. The Faulkner by Elizabeth May, which is a fancy novel set in historical Edinburgh, which Sounds brilliant, love that. Um, Beauty by Sherry S. Tepper, which is a sort of classic fantasy novel. This is from the um, Glance Fantasy Masterwork series, which pub republished a lot of like classic fantasy. And I don't know much about this except that it's based somewhat in the um, fairy tale of Sleeping Beauty. And Sherry S. Tepper is just quite a famous classic female fantasy and sci fi author that I've always wanted to try. Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Susan, which is a bit of a cult classic. I love this cover as well. It's kind of got that like pulpy fiction to it. Bluebird Bluebird by Attica Locke which is a detective novel. Sarah Waters Affinity which is a historical novel set in a women's prison which is potentially haunted. Of Murder Muses in Me which is a crime novel, literary novel about a woman who's convinced her favourite author didn't commit suicide and actually was murdered and decides to investigate this but whether he was murdered or not is up for question. Um, Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron which I know everyone's been raving about recently. It's had a lot of hype and I'm I'm so excited for. And lastly for that shelf, Dragon Unleashed by Grace Draven who is one of my favourite fantasy authors, particularly of fantasy romance and this is the second in a series that comes after Phoenix Unbound, the first of which I've already read and loved so cannot wait to read book two. I think I'm just going to stick all these back on here before I carry on. Allow me to introduce you to shelf two. Let's grab the rest of these books. I have The Curses by Laura Eve which is the second in a YA 
day um, sort of paranormal series about witches, um, the first of which was called The Graces. We then have Get a Life Chloe Brown, which is a contemporary romance novel that has such high praise and I'm really looking forward to. The Rental Heart and Other Fairy Tales by Christy Logan, which is a short story collection and I love Christy Logan's short stories. I've read another one of her collections and thought it was stunning, so would like to get around to this one. The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Evaristo, which is a novel in verse, love me a novel in verse, which actually follows a young woman in ancient Rome, so I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, some poetry now, we have Let Me Tell You by Nadine Aisha Jassat, my friend Jen gifted this to me and I've been meaning to read it ever since. We also have And Then She Ate Him by Tom Denby, which is one that has some mythological influences to it, so that sounds pretty good. Some short stories again, The Sea Clock and Other Stories by Nerys Quarmut, who is a Palestinian author. We then have The Star Touch Queen by Roshani Chokshi, which is in our fantasy novel. <laughs> There's a few of those on here. Um, the Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho, another fantasy novel. This one I think set in Victorian Regency London, sorry. And I love Zen Cho, so I've no doubt I'm going to love this one. We then have The Ghost Bride by Yang Zi Chu, which is a sort of like creepy YA story. The Devil's Footprints by John Burnside. Raw Blood by Katrina Ward, another horror novel. Tentacle by Rita Indiana. I'm a little bit nervous about this one because I picked it up on the basis of the blurb, which sounds spectacular. It's surrealist literary sci-fi, but I know um, a couple of friends of mine who ended up reading this one didn't love it, so I want to give it a chance and form my own opinion on it, but now I'm a little bit more hesitant than I was originally. But I feel like I need to just like go for it and I need to find out and, and not be put off by other people. Um, the Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle. The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole, which is a classic piece of Gothic literature. Dark River by Rim Kakacha. Uh, this is one that was sent to me by the publisher and sounds so fascinating because it's set over two time periods that are so vastly different. We have 6200 BC and 21,056 AD, so I have been meaning to get around to that. Spectacle by Jodie Lynn Zdrop. Lilith's Brood by Octavia E. Butler, which I didn't realise when I picked it up is a trilogy. This is actually three books in one, which makes it so much less intimidating because I feel like I can just read one at a time now. And it includes Dawn, Adulthood Rights and Imago, so we'll be hopefully picking up Dawn soon. Before She Ignites by Jodie Meadows. I love the cover of this one. It is a fancy novel, obviously. I believe there's also dragons, which is a plus. Passing Strange by Ellen Cleggs, which I think is a sort of surrealist, maybe sci-fi or fantasy queer novel set in the 1940s in, is it um, San Francisco, I think? Yes, San Francisco. The Good Doctor by Juno Dawson, which is a Doctor Who novel. I love a good Doctor Who or Torchwood novel, but it's been a long time since I've read one. And I love Juno Dawson as a writer, and I love Jodie's Doctor. So, like, I'm hoping that this is a match made in heaven. Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. The Lost Queen by Signe Pike, which I am sure is going to be a five-star read. Like, a lot of books I expect to be four-star reads, but this I am so sure is going to be five stars, and because of that, I think I'm scared to pick it up in case it's not, but I know that Huck over at Badger Reads adores this book and she's also a big Juliet Marillier fan and I think they're sort of comparable so I have such high expectations that it's scaring me and I do really really want to read it. We then have Braised Pork by Anne Yu. We Are All the Same in the Dark by Julia Heberlin. This one is a proof copy. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Garth Nix. Some more poetry, including A People's History of Chicago by Kevin Koval and Measures of Expatriation by Vanny Capildio. Then this little collection, which is two plays by Mary Shelley called Proserpine and Midas. Uh, they're two different plays. One is Proserpine, one is Midas, both based on Greek mythology. And that calls for another uh, bookshelf restack. And that brings us to the last, but certainly not least, bookshelf on this sort of Three shelf bad boy. Um, if you didn't see my previous video, you might not know that this is originally from Argos and it's around £18. They're one of my favourite bookcases in the world. I have a few of these because they're really nice and shallow, like there's not um, much leftover space once you put the books in, which I think is really, really nice. But we have some bigger hardbacks down here, so let me pull those out for you <clears throat> without taking the bookcase apart. 
We have Witches of Ash and Rune by E. Latimer, Elfland by Frida Warrington, Gin Patrol by Deepa Anapara, The Private Joys of Nena Maloney by Okechukwu Nzelu, The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood, The Beautiful by Renee Ade, and jumping on an earlier theme from this video, another Doctor Who novel. But this one is actually by one of the actors of Doctor Who himself, Tom Baker, who played the fourth Doctor and one of my favourite Doctors. He wrote this, which is particularly meant to be quite a creepy Doctor Who adventure called Scratchman. Did I already say that? I can't remember. The White Mare by Joe's Watson. This is another fantasy author who's been compared to Juliet Merlier. So I'm terrified to start it, but also think I'm going to love it. <laughs> Storm by Nicholas Skinner, which is a middle grade book. I loved Nicholas Skinner's other middle grade title, Bloom, so I'm really, really excited to read this one. We then have House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan, and some books which are going to be a spoiler for my next book haul, <laughs> um, Rosewater by Taddy Thompson, which is a sci-fi novel about aliens landing on Earth, The Aosawa Murders by Riku Onda, which is a Japanese crime novel, Lockwood & Co book one, The Screaming Staircase by Jonathan Stroud. This is a middle grade sort of paranormal detective story and I literally just received this one today in the post from a lovely subscriber who gifted it to me from my wish list, and I'm so excited it immediately went on the TBR shelf. We then have more dark sci-fi because those are two themes that I'm really going with at the moment and that is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. Similarly we have The Rift by Nina Allen which is a creepy book about a woman whose sister is abducted by aliens or is she? <laughs> Good Girls Die First by Catherine Foxfield which is a YA thriller. The Unmapped Sea by Mary Rose Wood which is book five in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series. My Possibly favourite middle grade series of all time and this is the first one I've owned in physical copy. I've been reading them on script as ebooks but finally caved and realised I'm going to want to reread them so I've decided to pick up this and the last book in physical copy and then work my way back and um, pick up books one to four on, in physical copy at some point so I can reread them as well. Then, last but not least, we have Mistletoe by Alison Littlewood which is another creepy sort of gothic-y horror novel about a woman who moves house. I feel like <laughs> creepy novels always start with people moving house. So those are all of the books on my TBR shelf. There is certainly no mean amount. I am super excited about all these books, that's why they're on my TBR shelf, but there is quite a few of them. So if you do have any thoughts on what I should prioritise, let me know. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.